Welcome to Get Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be covering practice problems of N413. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And if you like this question or this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Let's get right into the question. As you can see, you have a lot of funny looking things in this circuit, which are quite different from the ones which you actually done. So now, here we have S1, which is this switch over here. It's closed at time t is equal to zero. And we have S2, which is closed at time is equal to two. So these switches actually close at different times. And we have to compensate for that somehow in solving this problem. And we also have to find, uh, so we have to find RT for all time. And we also have to find I at time it is to one. And we also have to find I at time it is to three. So the note, the notable or the noticeable times which you actually have to solve are obviously time less than zero. But we now have an interval at time two. There is an there is a disturbance, which means something is going to change. So another time is going to be between zero and two, and the next time is going to be for time greater than two. So these are the three intervals which you're actually interested in, and we are actually going to cover all points in time if we cover these three. So let's start with time less than zero. At time less than zero, none of the switches are actually closed, and we only have this this part of the circuit. So that is not closed, and that is not this is closed at time zero. So we only have that. And we, if we look at what can we look at over here, we can look at this i, which is what we're actually interested in. So that part is on its own, and this part is on its own. And we only have this circuit on this side, and there's nothing which is supplying power to this side of the circuit. So I can confidently say that this i is equal to zero at that point. So just before zero and just after zero, we have zero amperes because nothing is actually supplying anything to this side. Right? So that is the first part, or that is the first interval which we have. We now move on to this interval, and this is going to be useful in this next interval we found our initial to be that. And now we're gonna to proceed to close this at time equals to zero. So after closing this part at time equals to zero, this is the circuit which you're gonna have. Let me just quickly draw it. So we're gonna have 15 and this is gonna be closed. And then we're gonna have 10 over there. Then we're gonna have 20 over there. And we're gonna have this. This is gonna be a short circuit because there's DC involved. And that is where we were expected to find our inductor. So this is what we have. And this is an I, obviously. So from this, we can find I infinity. So the I infinity is therefore going to be just doing current division. Combining these two, we're going to have 30 because that's 10 plus 20. So we're going to have 30. And that is in parallel with a 15. And therefore, we can do current division as follows. We're going to say 6, which is being supplied to this side, multiplied by 15, divided by 15 plus 30, which is 45. And over here, we're going to have 3. Then we're going to have one, then we're going to have three cancel out into two. And I infinity is therefore going to be two. So this is I and infinity for this particular period over here. And we're now going to find, um, this is where the storage element is supposed to be. So you take out the independent source and we're left with these two. And that is going to help us to find our, that is going to help us to find our, what's this, our RTH. And after finding our RTH, we can therefore proceed to find the time constant, right? So RTH, if we take this to be the point where we look to find our RTH and take this out, that's going to be an open circuit. We're going to be left with 15 and 30. And therefore RTH for this interval is going to be 15 plus 30, which is 45 ohms. Now, time constant, this is an LR circuit. So you're going to have L divided by R, which is equals to, and the value of that is 5, 5 memories. So 5 divided by RTH of 45. And this is going to be our time constant, which is the same as 1 over 9 seconds. So we now have all of this, and we can actually substitute everything to find our IFT for this interval. So IFT. It's equal to i infinity plus r zero subtract i infinity multiplied by e to the minus t divided by the time constant. Now we're going to substitute our i infinity that is two, 
and our r zero we found to be zero. And what's next? Our um, at this point we have that, and we subtract a value of our i infinity again is going to reappear, which is going to give us a value of two. And we're going to have e to the minus net divided by one over nine in amperes. So let's simplify everything and just summarize all of that. So it's going to be two, one, subtract e to the minus nine t amperes. And this is for the interval zero, two, two. So we've now solved time less than zero. We've now solved between zero and two. We now proceed to find what is going to happen at time greater than zero. But before we proceed, we're going to substitute the value two to find the value just before two, which is going to be equal to the value just after two. And substituting two into this formula, you're actually going to find a value of two amperes. And that is our initial condition for this next switching action. So there's a switching action which takes place here. We're going to close that. So for time greater than zero, or sorry, for time greater than two, we have a switching action here, and it's going to close that into a short circuit. So a short circuit in parallel with the 20 is going to result in a short circuit over there. And our new circuit is going to look something like this. We are going to have 15 over there. We are going to have 10. Then we're going to have a short circuit and another short circuit over there. And we're going to have I, which is still indicated over there. So now we're going to proceed to find our RTH again. RTH, it looks just about the same. It's going to be 45, which is 15 plus 10, looking at this point where the storage element was. So 45 ohms, our time constant is basically going to be similar or the same. So we have 5 Henry's divided by 45, which is going to give us a value of... So let's look at what, what's happening here for time greater than zero. What is going to happen? It's not the same, actually, because it's now 15 plus 10. We took out the 20. So 15 plus 10 is 25, actually. So now we have 5 divided by 25, which is 1 over 5 seconds. That is our time constant, which is the same as 0 0.2. Let's leave it like that for now. So now we have a time constant, we have our RTH. And let's find our I infinity, given this. So we can find our I infinity in this circuit using current division. So we're going to see our infinity is equal to 6 multiplied by 15 divided by 10 plus 15, which is 25. We're going to divide the top and the bottom by 5. Then we're going to have 5 at the bottom. We're going to have 3 at the top. Then we're going to have 18. 18 at the top divided by a value of 5. So our I infinity is equal to 18 divided by 5. And if we could just do that, you'd see that 3 multiplied by 5 is 15, and we have a remainder of 3, and we put a comma there, and then 5 into 30 is 6, and we expect our answer to be 3.6 amperes. So that is our i infinity. We know our i just before and just after 2. We know our i infinity, we know our time constant, and therefore we can now substitute into our formula. But now that this is time greater than 2, we have a switching action at time equals to 2, and therefore we have to account, or we therefore have to show that there is a delay or there is a change at time equals to 2, and this is how we actually show that. So this is i of 2, subtract i infinity, but now we multiply by e to the minus t minus 2 divided by the time constant. So our final answer after substituting everything into this formula over here is going to be i of t. It's equal to i infinity is going to be 3.6, which we found, plus i at 2 is 2. Subtract our i infinity of 3.6. And then multiply by e to the minus t subtract 2. And our time constant of, we found our time constant up here to be 1 over 5, 1 over 5. And therefore, your final, final, final answer for time greater than 2 is going to be R of t is equal to 3.6, subtract 1.6e to the minus 5. And we are going to have t subtract 2. Amperes, and this is for time greater than 2. But we aren't done solving the problem. We just have all the formulas for each of the intervals. We were also asked to find 
i at 1 and i at 3. Now we look at the intervals which we have. We have t less than 0. We have between 0 and 2. And we also have time between 2. So where any of these fall, that is the formula which we're actually going to substitute in. So 1 doesn't fall in this interval but it falls in this interval and doesn't fall in this interval. So we take the formula which is in this interval and we substitute one to find our value. So what is that interval? This is the interval. So we're basically gonna substitute one over there. So substituting one into that formula is gonna give us a value of, so I of one, substituting it into this formula, which is between zero and two, you're gonna have a value of two amperes as your answer. Now we look at this three, where does it actually fall? It falls in this interval over here and doesn't fall in any of the other intervals. So we take the formula for the interval where three actually falls. So substitute three over there, and we're actually gonna find the value of R3. And the value which you're gonna find after substituting the formula for T greater than two, the value which you should find is 3.5895 amperes.